In today's episode of the Pathmark Presents podcast, I got a very interesting guest here with me today. I'm with Aiden Murphy, and she's sailing over as the Vice President of Marketing over at Cylindro. And um, yeah, what uh, Cylindro is quite an interesting product, actually. It's a 3D product visualization um, uh, solution, which basically is there to you know, allow you to visualize um, you know, whatever types of products um, you think is you know, relevant for your scenario. We're going to deep dive into which use cases apply um and um you know how it is thinking about growth for the company so welcome to the show thank you thank you for having me of course yeah so maybe tell our listeners a little bit about cylinder what is it that you guys are doing and who you're serving sort of the, the best or the most Sure. So Celindo, we are a 3D commerce company. We make 3D product visualization for furniture brands and retailers currently. Um, and we do that by creating one master asset that those companies can use across their websites and marketing channels, email campaigns, social, and not only digitally, but in their showrooms as well. Celindo is part of Chaos uh, Group globally. Chaos, mm -hmm. if you're not familiar, is a world leader in visual visualization and computer graphics. So they create technology that empowers artists and designers to visualize really anything you can imagine. And um, we fit nicely in there, obviously, as 3D and 3D commerce is is really kind of the future of, of visuals. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Um, so what types of organizations would you say benefit the most from Cylindro? Maybe describe us the types of use cases a bit. The companies, yeah, sure. Just to get an idea. So I would say um, any business that's looking to, to sell more through high quality visuals and 3D renderings that they would use on their website. So in Cylindro's case, that means that marketers or e-commerce leaders in the furniture industry currently mm -hmm. that work at a retailer, manufacturer, or brand. And for Chaos, our parent company, that would be artists, designers looking to create these beautiful renderings and 3D images. That makes sense. So now... Um... How are these individuals finding Cylindro? Like, what's their journey looking like? How do they hear about you guys? What's the channels that they're working through in order to, you know, learn about and then getting started with Cylindro? Yeah, I would say Lucas definitely are amazing marketing channels. They're finding us that way mm -hmm. um, through, you know, LinkedIn, digital. We have a very um, great content strategy as well as um, LinkedIn. We have a lot of traffic coming through LinkedIn, coming through our website, and um, also, you know, customer referrals, word of mouth, a lot of times our product really speaks for itself. This week, I had a customer example come in through my sales team that said um, this prospect was looking to find who these beautiful 3D images of, say, a couch or a chair on a competitor's website. They were like, how is this looking so photorealistic and looking really real? They looked at the back end of the code and found out that was Cylindro. Um, So really, you know, we are an inbound and outbound shop. And then also sort of those great examples that are coming in as well. And additionally, furniture and retail trade shows. So post-COVID, those are coming back a little bit. Um, we will be at High Point Market in uh, North Carolina next uh, in two weeks. So really sort of engaging with our brands and our retailers in person again, post COVID. Mm -hmm. um, now you actually mentioned uh, uh, the website a little bit, people heading to the page, maybe tell me a bit more about the role of the website. How do you, how do you think about sort of, um, you know, in your current scenario, what, what, what role does it play in the buyer's journey when people are getting to get started with Cylindro? Yeah, I would say the website is really, you know, so important within the first, one of the first touches within the customer journey. Obviously, we're a visual company, we're a 3D company, being able to display some of those 3D products on our website could be the first time that that customer, prospective customer is seeing that, you know, in real life. And they're like, wow, this is an amazing product. I would love to have this on my website, I would love to be able to have this in my showroom for shoppers that are looking to customize certain pieces of furniture. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Now, um, 
okay, as a marketer, right? What we typically see is a lot of people that are on the show, they're very critical with their own websites, right? There's always something to improve, always something to change. What do you kind of, what would you consider like a strength of Cylindro.com at the moment from a marketing perspective or a user journey perspective? And mm. where do you see even further room for improvement? Great question. I would say definitely showing our product is a strength, but you can always get better at that, show new products, um, show different angles of the product, right? We have a 3D product, right? We're all about visuals, as I said. We have certain things on our website where customers can test out our product. They can, you know, put a couch in their room. They can, the couch behind me, this gray couch, if someone wanted it in purple or pink or blue, they're able to do that in a different finish and see that within their own environment on our website. So I love that. That's something that will always be part of Cylindo, being able to actually see our product and letting prospective customers try it out, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, I think always messaging as a marketer, you can get clearer, you can get better. Um, you know, we're a B2B company, but I always say B2B, B2A, B2H is business a human, right? So how can we describe our customers' challenges a little better than um, we do currently? And how can we just have really clear and concise messaging paired with that beautiful product that we are selling and marketing? Mm -hmm. I mean, you've been in very interesting um, CMO roles, I mean, even obviously prior uh, to uh, to Celindo. Um, What have you learned, as you were touching there on the website, the messaging uh, piece, what have you learned over the years um, when it comes to you know, driving conversions on the website. Is there any sort of tools, methods, approaches, anything that you found helpful over the years that maybe or patterns you've noticed? Yeah, I would say always paying attention to your website because it should be one of your top, if not your number one channel, because you are communicating so much to prospective um, clients, to prospects, to current clients, to the industry. And I think always taking a critical look at that, the website is always in my quarterly planning and yearly planning to make sure that we have the best and looking at redesigns, right, and new messaging. And I think also, you know, letting prospects and consumers educate themselves, right? I think this is a big sort of topic in marketing, whether you gate content or let people educate themselves and learn about your product and then raise their hand and say, yes, I'm ready to talk to someone. Mm -hmm. And that's something that has really proved well in the past for me and my past roles, as well as Lindo is providing really valuable content and letting people educate themselves, right? Consumers are smart. Um, they want to educate themselves and build their own journey and um, giving them the tools to do so, I think really helps as, as you're growing a scaling company. Mm -hmm. um, that actually brings me to a great point because um, I would like to switch gears a little bit and talk about your journey. And you were talking about education there sure. as, as a marketer. Um, yeah. Where do you personally like to educate yourself? Like what's sort of, you know, your go-to places, your, is there any communities, platforms, where do you feel like you're getting good information? Oh, great question. I love talking to peers that are also in marketing or PR. Um, I am so lucky to have had so many different experiences within marketing and starting in the PR agency world and then being able to take that experience and go into tech and startups, but also drawing on other people's experience in the marketing world that might not be in tech, um, what works for them, what doesn't. On Fridays, I join something called um, CMO Coffee Chat when my schedule allows, which is put on by a company called Sixth Sense, which is a buyer intent company. Great tool um, that I use. I have used in the past and I currently use in my marketing stack. And I would say, you know, drawing on others experience, we have a topic every single Friday and we have a coffee together and you're learning from your peers and learning from others. Um I think that's the best way as a marketer to learn rather than, you know, you can listen to podcasts, listen to, you know, read books and do all of those great things, which is great. But having that real life experience, I think is, you know, what is really needed to push you to the next level. Makes complete sense. I appreciate you sharing that. Um, 
I would have some rapid fire questions to slowly wrap it up for today as we're slowly approaching the end of, of the interview. Are you ready for those? They're a bit of a surprise for our guests though, but no hard. problem. I, I'm ready. What is the last book that you read? Ooh, the last book, probably a parenting book because I am the parent of a one and a half year old and a kindergartner. So not only am I always trying to get better at marketing, but I'm always trying to get better at parenting as well. Congrats. Um, what's one single thing that your company is focused on the most at the moment? I would say um, 3D being the future and educating our industry of why that is. Very good. Now, if there would be no boundaries in technology, right? And you would have a magic wand, you could fix whatever you would want it for your role in marketing. What's the one thing that you would fix? Oh, that's a great question. I would say I would love to just have clean data. I think in CRMs, whether you're using Salesforce or HubSpot, data can get so murky and unclear and just having a clear view of data at all times could just help you be a more data-driven marketer and make fast, intelligent, great decisions. What's the last thing that kept you awake at night about the company? Oh boy, I had a dream last night that I missed my flight because I'm traveling over the next few weeks um, to Europe and to North Carolina. So um, I would say just, you know, that, and also I manage a global team and just making sure that we are feeling, um, you know, like we're in person, even when we're not, I think the pandemic taught us so much about how we work and how we live and being able to create these strong bonds and relationships over zoom and through amazing things like this podcast is something I'm always trying to do with my team. Very cool. And for the very last question, right, I would like to do a little bit of time travel. Let's go back to Northeastern University, right? You're heading oh, out wow. of formal ed education into the world of, you know, business, growth, marketing. Um, what would be the one advice that you would give yourself for that journey? Oh, very good question. I would say get comfortable being uncomfortable and know that the only constant in you know, tech and startups and scaling companies is change and get used to change and get really comfortable with that. Any tips on how to achieve that for the listeners? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of experience, a lot of failing, a lot of winning. Um, but I would say definitely trying to, you know, be the best you can and be transparent and open with with your journey and to constantly be learning and trying to get better at your trade. Cool. And I really appreciate you joining us today for the Path on Presents podcast. I want to give you the very last word. If somebody would be forgetting all that we discussed about Solindo today, what's the one thing that they should take away about Solindo? I would say visuals matter and 3D is a future. So let's get on board. Thanks a lot for being a guest on Path on Presents. Thank you. Thanks, Lucas.